Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you tonight, Lord. You who is all-powerful and almighty. There is no one or anything who is as great as you, Holy Father. And tonight, Lord, we have returned to these grounds to lift up the name of Jesus Christ, to proclaim that Jesus is the answer for every problem that mankind has. And so, Holy Father, we pray that even now, you will touch each individual mind right now, Lord, and cause us to focus on you. Lord, cause us to take our attention from the distractions and look to you who is the greatest of all lights and power. Lord, we are here tonight to worship you in spirit and in truth and we will worship you, Holy Father. We will give you the glory which belongs to you and your word, Lord, will be proclaimed tonight to those unsaved souls that need salvation. For those, Lord, who need deliverance, they will hear your word tonight being declared. Lord, we ask that you will consecrate each individual here on the grounds right now. As Lord, we focus our thoughts on you. We pray, God, that you will consecrate the grounds. Lord, we declare these grounds holy unto you. Even now, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray that every foot that place on this ground tonight, Lord, each individual will recognize that you are here. Every unsaved who should come here, Lord, I should hear the voice coming from this podium tonight, that, Lord, they will recognize that you, Holy Father, reside here tonight to do a great thing. And so, Father, we pray that you will just minister to your servants, the moderator, the musicians, the praise team, the speaker for tonight. Lord, every person who should be taking a lead role, we ask for a special anointing upon such one tonight in the name of Jesus. And Father, may you be glorified tonight. And when we should have departed from here, your plan will be fulfilled. You will receive all the glory and all the praise. And so, Father, we give ourselves to you right now. In Jesus' name, amen. And may I just ask the people of God to put your hands together and give the Lord a nice round of applause. He's worthy of our glory. He's worthy of our praises. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And at, the, at this time, it's my pleasure to present to you our moderator for tonight, our sister Sharna K. Brown. Put your hands together for her. everyone how are we feeling no man how are we feeling no man we still sound like we're asleep how are we feeling hallelujah welcome to another night of our crusade um, this night is geared towards our youth so this is like our youth crusade Eek. right all right <laughs> I'm going to ask the praise and worship team to come and usher us into the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Let me hear a hallelujah out there. 
Hallelujah. One more time. Hallelujah. Let the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords be glorified. And because he is glorified, we are going to sing higher, higher. We are going to lift them up in this place tonight. And then we are going to sing lower, lower, and we are going to stamp the Satan. Lower. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Higher, 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 lift Jesus higher, 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 lift Jesus higher, 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 to just focus on all the things that he has been doing in your life. And when you think about the goodness of God and all you love him, then the praises will come out of your mouth, out of your heart, to just worship him because truly he deserves our worship tonight. Hallelujah. And we are going to give him Hallelujah. all our worship. We are not going to just give him a part, but we are going to give him our heart. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I love that man from Galilee. I love that man from Galilee. For he has done so very much for me.
are so wonderful. You are so great. You are so marvelous. When I look at the things around me, and the sun, and the moon, and the stars, and we see all of these things that God has made, or not just for me, but for you, I'm saying, oh God, I'm so thankful. I'm so thankful that how you made man, you made a herd, you made a water. And these are the things that the Lord wants us to reflect on, to just show that we can give him thanks. The enemy at times allows us to see the bad things. But God said, what's everything that is good, honest, lovely? These are the things that we should think on. And if I'm here to pray today, I want to think about the good things. I don't want to think about any bad things because when I praise him, then everything the Lord will work out for our own desire. He will give us our heart desire. He will make all things well. He will heal our body. He will touch our mind. He will deliver us. Whatever it is that we are going through, that is going to come true when we give him praise, when we think of the good things, when we say thank you, Jesus, for all things that you have made and you have made them good. And so tonight, Lord, I lift you up, oh God. I honor you. I adore you. I lift up your name because you are the King of kings and you are the Lord of lords. You reign, oh God. Father, when I think of your goodness and all that you have done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah. Hallelujah to your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. And so, God, tonight, Lord, we thank you for the sunshine, Lord. We thank you, God, for the very sunshine. Because if there was no sun, Lord, I can't imagine our life being what it would have been. Maybe public service would have turned off our light because we could not have paid it. But you allowed the sun to shine during the day, Lord. You allowed the sun, the moon to shine in the night. For those who don't have light, oh God, they can still see because there is a moon and there is stars, oh God. God, I thank you. You made man in such a way, oh God, where they can make things, oh God. You made them special, oh God, for different type of skills. Father, oh God, you have given us talents. And so, oh God, today we give you all the glory. We give you all the praise. We give you all the honor. We worship and we adore you and we lift up, oh God. We thank you, oh God, for making us, oh God, very unique. You say that we are special, oh God. Hallow, we are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar one. And if you can say that, oh God, it means that we are blessed. It means that we are special. And so, oh God, we thank you. We thank you, oh God, for even this very crusade that you have ordained on. You have seen way back then that this day, that, oh God, that I'll be up here to just lift up your name, to glorify you, to encourage your people, oh God, to give you thanks in everything. You said that we must give you thanks in the good times and in the bad times, oh God. And so, oh God, we worship you. We glorify you, Lord. We lift you up, oh God. We give you our heart. We give your heart unto you, oh God. Thank you, Jesus, for your love towards us. You sent your holy begotten Son, O oh God, to die on Calvary for not just me, but for all of us, O oh God, that we can come to you, O oh God, and we can talk to you, and we can have that fellowship with you. We can have that relationship with you, O oh God. We thank you, O oh God, for all things. We thank you, O oh God, for everything that you have made, and you have made them for a reason. You have made them for a purpose, a purpose in our lives, a purpose in our friends' life, a purpose in our family life. Oh God, we give you all the glory, we give you all the praise, we give you all the honor, Lord, and there is 
none like unto to you and there will never be any like you oh god because you came and you forgive each and every one of us oh god when we ask of your god when we have needs lord you provided when we have sickness lord you reach down and you touch our bodies you heal us in spite of our ways you heal us oh god in spite of our faults oh god and so god we glorify you we lift up oh god we give you all the glory you deliver us oh god when we need deliverance you save us oh god when we need saving you came oh god you came into this world lord to seek souls oh god that need you and i pray oh god that tonight if there's any soul that is here that don't know you as lord and savior i pray oh god that they will run to you tonight lord they'll never make another minute pass oh god without knowing you because you are so good you are so faithful unto us and in spite of all things you still love us you love us with an everlasting love and i thank you oh god for each and every one that is here tonight I pray, oh God, in for the speaker, Lord, that you will speak through him. I pray, oh God, when it's healing time, oh God, that you touch your people. You touch your children, Lord. Heal them. Let them not live here the same way. But you deliver them also. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen and amen. Following directly by brother Demaria Sigri. Hallelujah. How are the people of God feeling tonight? Are you feeling blessed? Are you feeling highly favored? Hallelujah. Praise God. Can we just give a, a round of applause to the Holy Spirit in our midst? The enemy has been fighting us from evening, but by the Spirit of the Lord, we will press along. Amen. I would like to especially welcome the team from Maypen Open Bible Church. Can you just wave your hands and show us where you are? Praise God. Many of you are here. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We thank you for coming. And we hope that you get your cup filled tonight. Amen. I want to especially welcome the pastor from Maypen Open Bible, Reverend Carlton Dunkley. Do you wave your hands, sir? Praise God. Bless you, man of God. Thank you for being here. And we've had some support from other Open Bible ministers. Are any of them here with us this evening? Can you just raise your hands? Ah, praise God. We thank you. This woman of God has been here many nights, and she has been a big help to us. God bless you. I would like to welcome the first-time visitors. Anybody who is with us for the first time tonight. I know Maypen people will be raising their hands. Okay, then. Welcome once again. And we want to especially thank those who have been here with us for every night of the crusade. We've had some faithful members of the Open Bible Outreach. Hi, Mrs. Fagan. We thank you for being here and we thank you for your support. Now, I would like you to assist me with this welcome. Could you turn to your left and to your neighbor to your right and to your neighbor behind you and greet them in the name of the Lord. Amen. I want everybody to feel welcome here this evening and we start by welcoming each other. Amen. So we hope for another mighty move of God tonight. We've been seeing miracles and breakthroughs here on this little plot of ground. And we ask that you keep us in prayer for more souls to be won tonight. Amen. So welcome, welcome, welcome once again to the Open Bible, Old Barber Outreach. We thank you for being here. Praise God. God bless you. The scripture reading for tonight is taken from Isaiah 55, verse 1 to 9. I repeat, the scripture for tonight is taken from Isaiah 55, verses 1 to 9. The scripture reading will be... The 
scripture reading will be taken from Isaiah 59, 55, 1 to 9. When you find it, can you please stand? Whoever one that thirsted, come he to the waters, and he that had no money, come he buy and eat. He come buy wine and milk without money and without a price. Wherefore, do he spend money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which satisfies not? Hearken diligently unto me, and eat, and, and eat he that which is good, and let your soul delight itself in fatness. Incline your ears, and come unto me, hear, and your soul shall live, and I will make an everlasting covenant with you. Even the sure mercies of David, behold, I have given him for a witness to the people, a leader and a commander to the people. Behold, thou shalt call a nation that thou knowest not, and nation that knew not thee shall run unto thee because of the Lord thy God. And for the Holy One of Israel, for he that had glorified thee, seek he the Lord while he may be found. Call he upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his ways and the unrighteous man in his thoughts, and let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither your ways, my ways, see the Lord. Nine and last. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways are higher than your ways and my, my thoughts than your thoughts. This is the end of God's holy word. We honor it by saying. Amen. Clap him now. That's right. I'm going to invite Reverend Dunkley from the Maypen Open Bible to provide a short evangelistic charge while the children get themselves ready. Our moderator, the host pastor, Reverend MacDonald, other ministers in the house, my brothers and sisters, greetings. Greetings. Hallelujah. Are you happy to be here? Just stand and give the Lord a clap offering. The psalmist declared, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. We are on the outside, but we are still in the house of the Lord. Amen? And we are here to exalt his name. We are here to glorify him. We are here to magnify him. Because the whole duty of man is to praise the Lord. Let everything that has breath, let everything that has breath, let everything that has breath, Give him the highest praise in the house. Give him the highest praise in the house. Call him by his name. Call him by his name. Over this side, give him the highest praise. This side, call him by his name. One more time. There is power in the name of Jesus. Do you believe that this evening? Hallelujah. There is power in the name of Jesus. You may be seated for a short while. I have been asked to give, to give an evangelistic charge 
I deemed it a pleasure to be here this evening. And to give this charge, I'll be speaking to you from St. Matthew chapter 28, verse 18 to 20. And it reads, And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. This evening, I want to speak to you just for a brief moment on the topic, the command for the church, the command for the church. God has given each and every one of us a command, and that command is to what? To preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. And you may be saying, but pastor, I am not a preacher. If you cannot preach, then you teach. And you might be saying, pastor, I am not a teacher. If you cannot preach and you cannot teach, then live the gospel life. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and come to glorify your father which is in heaven. Jesus has given us this great commission to preach the gospel of salvation about his death, his burial, and his resurrection. Jesus has laid the foundation on which the church is to be built. Jesus has laid the foundation and which we are to present the gospel of Jesus Christ. We are to preach about his love, about his kindness, about his grace, and about his mercies towards us. God has called each and every one of us in this ministry, and this is the command that he has given to us. We are not only just to preach the gospel about, the, about death, burial, and resurrection, but we are to preach repentance and forgiveness of sin. We must let the world know that we were all born in sin and shaped in iniquity. But we are thanking God for his son, Jesus Christ, who came that we may have life and have life more abundantly. This life is only in Christ and through Christ. That is why Jesus reminded us, I am the good shepherd. I am the chief shepherd. I am the great shepherd. The great shepherd, he has given his life for you and I. He has given his life for the world. And that is why we are here this evening. Because of what Jesus has done for us on Calvary's cross. We are not only called to preach the gospel about death, burial, and resurrection. We are not only called to preach about repentance and forgiveness of sin, but we are called to preach about the Holy Spirit. That we who accept Jesus Christ, we are not alone. That is why we have been reminded, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And when we look and we see what is happening in the world, we are thanking God that as children of God, we can live the overcoming life because the Holy Spirit is in us. He indwells us. Paul, in writing to the church in Ephesus, reminded them that they have been sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. And that is why we are to go out there and to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. Preach about the kingdom of God. When we look in the scripture in Matthew chapter 14, Matthew chapter 7, and verse Matthew chapter 4, and verse 17, Jesus started out by preaching about the kingdom. Repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. 
The world need to repent. The world need to know that there is a savior. The world need to know that there is a better place when we depart this life. And we all must depart this life because it is appointed unto man once to die, but after death, there comes the judgment. The question, therefore, where will you spend the rest of eternity? The lifespan of a man is three score years and ten. And for reason of strength, you may go on to 80 or 90 or even 100. But the thing about it is that we must all die. There is a place called eternal life or eternal condemnation. Without end, eternal. That is more important than the life that we are living where we feel that we, are, we reach. We do not reach because we all must depart this life. But we know that there's a place called hell and there's a place called heaven. I come to recognize that people are not preaching about hell anymore. People are preaching prosperity gospel. But there's only one prosperity gospel. And hear me and hear me well. That prosperity gospel is in Jesus Christ. In his death, his burial, and his resurrection. And that is why Jesus has given us this great commission. But when we look carefully at the text. After the resurrection of Jesus. And he appeared unto his disciples. Some doubted him. Some were in fear. But Jesus reminded them that all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. As we worship the King of kings, the Lord of lords, we must not have any doubt. Because he has given us that which the Father has given to him to give us. And therefore, we know that we are in Christ Jesus. And because we know that we are in Christ Jesus, we must spread the good news of salvation. The theme for our national, for our association, the call to worship. The call to worship does not mean you come to church on a Sunday and sit in the four walls. The call, the true call to worship is to go there and to witness, to tell people about the love of Jesus, to bring hope to the hopeless, to tell them that there is a Savior. His name is Jesus. Can you imagine if we all who are here tonight, we live here and each one meet a sinner, each one preach to one, teach one, and invite them to Christ. Can you imagine next week Sunday, Reverend McDonald, McDonald would have to probably expand the church. Each one of us must reach one. You cannot preach, but you must be able to tell people that there is a way out of their distress, that there is a better way, and that way is in Christ Jesus. That is why the songwriter penned the song, My Hope is Built on Nothing Less But Jesus' Blood and His Righteousness. I believe that God has given us as a church a marching order. God has given us a universal claim and we must go and fill that claim that God has given to us to tell people they need to repent because there's a place called hell and there's a place called heaven. You must decide where you want to go, but when you depart this life, your blood must not be upon my shoulder. You must say that you have heard the gospel, but I refuse from accepting the gospel. Therefore, your hand is eternal condemnation. Let us remember that God has given each and every one of us that great commission to preach and to teach about salvation. And as we go, I want, you to, I want to remind you tonight that you are not alone. Because Jesus reminded his disciples. And lo, 
I am with you always. Have no fear. Have no doubt. Because he is with you. Worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Because of what he has done for you and I. He has bring us back into that fold. We who were not a people, we are privileged tonight to be called the people of God. We who were an outcast, no, we are called the people of God. What a God we serve. What a God we serve. We need to spread the good news of salvation. God bless you. God bless you. Give them a bigger round of applause than that.
Can we give them another round of applause? Big up to the little one on the keyboard. <laughs> to come and do the notices. <clears throat> Thank you, Sister Shawnee. Good night, everyone. Shall we praise the Lord? Shall we wave our hands and praise the Lord? Shall we jump to our feet and praise the Lord? Oh, it's a Friday night, and you probably would have had a tough week, but we are here to worship the Lord. We are here to glorify the Lord. So let me hear you just praise him one more time. Hallelujah. Shout Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Thank you very much. Love our children so much. Love our children so much. Thank you, Sister Raquel, for the continued work with them, Brother David. Yes, and uh, they are making tremendous progress musicians and the singers in our children's ministry wonderful so tonight we just want to thank you for your role in this ministry this outreach to old harbor is a is a very special outreach we believe god has brought us to this location not because old harbor needed another church no this particular building was locked up for nearly 20 years. Locked up. Not because other churches didn't want it. Not because schools didn't want it. Supermarkets didn't want it. No, but it was locked up by God, reserved for us to come here. To minister in a particular way to the communities of Old Harbor. To Darlington Drive, Darlington Avenue. To... Claremont Gardens, Burke Road, Commons, to all the districts in this vicinity. God has a special plan for his people. And I'm just so excited that we all are a part of this plan. And so as we come tonight, we come to, to worship God. We come to bless God. We come to pray for others that God, by his Holy Spirit, will draw, draw people onto him. But I'm not a preacher. I'm here to pray over the offering and to encourage you to give your best offering in the Lord. So as you have seen, this outreach, we are just a year plus. But God is continuing to do great things. And we are on the verge of even greater things. So as you are here tonight in worship, you have been participating in worship so far. We want to encourage you to continue to worship. And now it's time to worship in your giving, in your sowing. In your investing. Investing in this work here is a good investment. The returns are everlasting. And you can see it in our children. They're part of the after school program. They're part of our music training program. They're a part of our youth development program. And there are much more um, opportunities awaiting this community. So as you give tonight, give to the Lord. Let's pray. Father in heaven and our God, Jehovah Jireh, the God who provides for your people. Thank you so much for your people. Thank you so much for the jobs you've given us, for the provisions you've given us. Oh, the opportunity to earn, the opportunity to generate income. Lord, oh, we bless you. And now, Father, the opportunity has now been afforded to us to worship you in our giving. So, Almighty God, Holy Spirit, pour out now upon your people as we give to you, as we worship you in our giving and through our giving. So, bless all of us. Lord, I particularly pray for those who are without a gift tonight. Maybe they are jobless. Maybe they are between jobs. Maybe they are students. Father God, I pray that you will provide opportunities for earning, for income development, small business development. Just bless your people so that your people can give generously to your work. In Jesus' name, amen. 
So the ushers are wait, will, will wait on you as you give unto the Lord. I'll just take a, a few minutes while they are waiting on you to just remind you, if, especially for those of you who are new to the community and are visiting, this is your first night, that we are a full service church. We are a full service church that is big on doing what God would want us to do. So we have our divine services um, on Sunday morning at 8 o'clock. We start our worship service. We then break um, and go into our interactive Sunday school and new believers class. We want all persons, especially those of you who have invited Jesus in your heart um, this week, to know that there is a special class led by our pastor to help you walk out your faith, to show you the steps that you need to take to grow, to become the person that God wants you to be. So this Sunday morning, 8 o'clock, sharp, will be that special class for new believers. You will join other new believers in that, and you will grow together. And the others of us, we will go into our age-specific um, classes and grow together there also. Then, of course, at about 9, 10, we go into divine worship. And that has been awesome to just see how God is blessing his people through our worship services on Sunday mornings. And we close up at about 11 o'clock. And we return on Tuesday night for our Bible study. We, we want to we wanna, um, keep feasting on the word. We want everybody to know that church is not just Sunday mornings. Church is not just Sunday mornings. Elder Terrence, church is not just Sunday mornings. Church... Church also, um, our worship also involves studying of the word. Studying of the word. So, for the time being, that's the only night service we have on Tuesday night, um, our Bible study. So, we encourage every believer and every member of the community to put your um, plans and your schedules together to allow for us to meet here for Bible study at 7.30, okay? Um, so on Tuesday evening, prior to Bible study, our pastor, who is a trained counselor, um, is available to, to meet members of the community um, to talk, to help to problem solve, to counsel, to guide, to mentor. So at around three o'clock, for about four hours, he is here and available to the community. Um, so I want to encourage persons, you know, in Jamaica, we don't practice this thing of talking to counselors. You know, it's kind of not our thing, but it needs to become our thing where we share, where we talk with others, especially people who we can confide in. So a pastor is available. Um, check him out. He will help us and all to process some of the things that we need to go through. All right. So just want to remind the brethren in particular that we do have that um, ongoing block drive. And, and it's becoming more important now that we sell more block blocks because the office block is almost completed. It's now time for the multipurpose room because now that the office block is completed, the children used to use it for Sunday school probably won't have anywhere else to go except upstairs where there is no roof. So, um, and I'm happy to tell you that construction has begun on upstairs. So we need the money to complete that. So it's exciting to see what God is doing here in our community church. So we want to encourage you to, to do your part and to pitch in and um, let God do the rest. As a community church, we are available to do those, um, provide support for the community in um, with funerals, weddings, and other gatherings. Our church is open to provide those support um, to the community. So bear these in mind as we continue to worship. This is Crusade 2023. Anybody remember the theme? What is the theme that we have? <laughs> All right. Let's go again. I caught you off guard. What is the theme for Crusade 2023? 
yes, yes. Jesus, I mean, I, I, I like the part that one Jamaican word in the team. I mean, everybody kind of jump over it and keep using the English version, but I like the Jamaican one day get a Jamaica word. Jesus are the answer for every problem. <laughs> Listen, we have been doing great all week, and I trust that as the man of God prepares to come, that we will let the Holy Spirit open up our hearts to receive all that God has in store for us. God bless you. Have a good night. Hallelujah. Jesus is the answer for every problem. All right, I'm going to ask Sister Gloria Finnegan to come and introduce the speaker. So she will introduce the speaker, and then the voices you will hear is the voices of praise from Maple Open Bible, and then you will hear from the Word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is good. And all the time, God is good. Good night, everyone. Tonight, this is my privilege to introduce to you the man of God, although he's no stranger to many of us. But just in case you don't know, let me tell you about him. Our speaker for tonight has been a Christian for over 10 years. He holds a bachelor degree in theology from the College of Theological and Interdisciplinary Studies, CITES. He became a minister of the Open Bible Standard Churches of Jamaica in September of 2022. He's currently the youth pastor of Kingston Open Bible Church. He's married to Tenny for five years and the union has produced two children, son Malachi and daughter Milani, if I got it right. Brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, please help me make welcome tonight's speaker, none other than Minister Orlando Waite. Put your hands together for the man of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, lift your hands and shout a big hallelujah. Do better than that. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. It's such a pleasure to be, to be ministering to you, to us tonight. And um, we are here to, to, to let Darlington, the community of Darlington, and by extension, Old Darbo, knows that there's a man who can a man who can calm the raging sea in your life. Hallelujah. A man who can heal the brokenhearted. Amen. And that man is Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless the name of Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. I can't take a heart that's broken. And make it over again. I know a man who can, and I can't take a soul that seems sick. Make it. Ah uh... 
do we truly know this man tonight? Do we truly know this man? I don't know what you call him. Some call him Jesus. Some call him friend. Some call him Savior. I don't know what, is, what he is to you tonight. But I know he is the King of Kings. The Lord of Lords. The conquering lion of the tribe of Judah. I know that he is the one that created all things. I know that he spoke and things came into existence. He said let there be and there was. He caused the sun to rule the day. The moon and the stars to rule the night. My God is separated. Hey God Almighty the waters from the land. In the sea there was the aquatic life form of different different forms and on the land there were terrestrial life forms. What a mighty God we serve. He formed man in his own likeness and his own image and he breathe the breath of life into his nostril taking over this territory now in the name of Jesus we say a thousand shall fall at our side tonight and ten thousand at our right hand but none shall come nigh thee because the weapons of our warfare they are not carnal but mighty through God in the tearing down in the pulling down of strongholds tonight we will look to the hills from whence cometh our help our help cometh from the Lord the creator of heaven and earth he is our light and our salvation whom shall we fear when the wicked even our enemies and our foes oh my God came upon us to eat up our flesh they stumble and fell because Jesus Christ has never lost a battle so God we give you worship tonight we give you praise tonight we say it not it is not by might it is not by power but it is by your spirit tonight I'm gonna ask those who are intercessors we are just gonna pray for a minute we're going to take charge of this ground. Rababa ko shata. Rako she de be 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 ko she koto. Every force at work, witches, warlocks. Raka she koto bo kosata. Obya workers, necromancy, ma kosata. Satan is witch. Oh my God Almighty, lodge. Every spirit that is not of God. Every unclean spirit. We plead the blood, the blood, the blood. The blood, the blood of Jesus Christ. We say, Satan, back up. The blood of Jesus Christ is against you tonight. We say, what is bind on earth is bound in what is what we bind on earth is bound in heaven. What we loose on earth is loose in heaven. There is an agreement tonight with heaven. So, Lord God, have your way all over all oh over tonight. Come on, church. Come on, church. Push with me tonight. Push with me. Push with me. Marco Shataba. Raba ba 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 ba. We're gonna clear this atmosphere. And it is prayer that we are gonna use tonight. Raba ba ba koto. Raka she koto bokota. Marco she de be 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 kata. We trample upon everything that is not of God tonight. In the name of Jesus. God we say saturate this part of ground now we war in the realm of the spirit we put on the old armor of God tonight and we war against principalities we war against powers we war against the rulers of darkness tonight in the name of Jesus we say Satan arise the enemies of God we say God arise and let all your enemies be scattered now 
in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. So God, we give you honor. God, we give you glory. God, we give you praise. You are God and God all by yourself. You are God and God all by yourself. You are God and God all by yourself. Every yoke be broken now. Every burden be lifted now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. You may be seated in the presence of Almighty God. God. Let me greet uh, um, the man of this house, Reverend Matt Donald, and um, the leadership team here at Olaba. I want to also greet, uh, as I made mention last night, I just have a whole heap of pastor friend. And one of those good friends is Reverend Dunkley. Greeting, sir, in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ. Of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Now, Church of the Living God, we are on the theme. Jesus are the answer for every problem. Last night, when I spoke, or when I preached, I delivered the word. I made mention that the biggest problem that we have is the sin problem. Because every other problem is a result of sin. And so last night I made mention that in these last days so many things are going to happen. And if we read um, 2 Timothy 3 from verse 1 to about verse 6 and uh, we read the scripture and we line it up with what is going on in the world I need somebody to pray for me tonight uh, and we line it up with what is happening in the world we can see that the coming um, of the Lord is indeed at hand we talk about uh, the immorality oh immorality has increased in this nation uh, the lack of love we talk about uh, the world trying to force some things on us and for the church uh, to accept and we say no we will not accept those things uh, we are going to start and as a church and declare that Jesus Christ is Lord and that will not change and cannot change and I encourage the Christians to remain holy, walk holy because without holiness none of us are going to see the face of Almighty God. God. So fast forward to tonight with all the challenges I've been having from last night, from party next door to, well, I don't think the rain is a challenge. It's a blessing um, to JPS just turn off the light, but I'm glad we are plugged into Jesus. Uh, that is one power source that just can't go out uh, and will never. Can somebody give our God a praise? Our God, my God, that power supply uh, will never go out. Now, Church of the Living God, problems. There are some synonyms. If I learn anything in English class, they say synonyms sometimes. Words that have similar meaning, are basically the same meaning. So when I look at problems, are problem. Some synonyms are difficulty. Just in case, you know, yeah, we use problem and you know, get it fully. Issues, trouble, worry, complication,
said uh, a male child. So one of the thing with the book of Job is uh, it, 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 it talks about the relationship that Job had uh, with Almighty God. Uh, and we as Christians, uh, I would want to believe that all of us here tonight uh, have a personal relationship uh, with Almighty God. 
God. So church of the living God. Now the book of Job it started. Um, chapter 1 start off by saying church of the living God. It talks about Job. Um, spirituality. The Bible let us know that Job. My God this man was a righteous man. Some virgin said that this man was a blameless man. Job church of the living God was a good man. You will never find Job go to the Obia man. No, you will never find Job bad mining. No people pit me. No Bibles. The Bible says that Job, church of the living God, shunned the very appearance of evil. This man knew God. He knew that God was a righteous God. So the Bible start off with Job's spiritual life and the relationship that he has with his creator. The Bible also goes on, Church of the Living God, to talk about Job's social life. Now the Bible says that Job was married. Job, Church of the Living God, had ten children. The Bible, I believe, it never stated whether it was um, different women or, or whatever, but he had uh, ten children, Church of the Living God, three girls and seven boys. So Job, Church of the Living God, uh, was a family man. Uh, and not only was Job, Church, uh, a family man, uh, Job was a man of great wealth. Uh, if it was in this time that we were living in, uh, you could compare Job uh, with the Michael Lee chins of this day. Uh, you could compare Job uh, with the Lassell chins of this day. Uh, you could compare Job uh, with the Matalans of this day. Because uh, the Bible says uh, that Job, Church of the Living God, uh, had uh, great uh, wealth, so Church of the Living God. Uh, things was going on for Job. Uh, my God, if Job wanted to book uh, a hotel tonight, tonight is Friday night night uh, and carry them to our tell as a family. Uh, let us have fun. Uh, my God, we have money. Uh, and Job was a man like this. Uh, Job is not like the people of the world now. Uh, even some of us as Christians uh, who hold on to the things of this world. Uh, and my God, Solomon, uh, who says vanity, vanity, uh, all our vanity and vexation of the spirit. Uh, so Job did not hold to any of those uh, material Real things. But church of the living God uh, in the midst uh, of life sometimes uh, my God things happen. Uh, you want to know why things happen? Uh, church of the living God there is uh, a real devil out there. Uh, the Bible says uh, he's like a roaring lion. Uh, he might make up whole heap of eyes. Uh, he might try to intimidate you. Uh, he might try to drive fear in you. Uh, but I share the Bible says God has not given us a spirit of fear but of love of power and of a sound mind so even though Satan is out there like a roaring lion looking for whom he may devour I know tonight without a shadow of a doubt that Jesus Christ of Nazareth he is the conquering lion of the tribe of Judah I know Jesus Christ of Nazareth is the king of kings, the lord of lords, the conquering lion of the tribe of Judah. So with all that the enemy is going on with, I know who is in control. Can somebody lift their hands and give God worship tonight, church of the living God. So the church of the living God, you must understand that the trouble that we are facing, unsaved are, I want to speak to the unsaved too, you know, unsaved. Because some of you, what you are going through may be a result of God uh, trying to get your attention. Uh, I say that to my unsaved friends again. Uh, some of what you may be facing now, uh, maybe God uh, is trying to get your attention. Uh, maybe God, not even maybe God wants you to repent uh, and come to him. Uh, God wanted to come out of that uh, and come in at this. Uh, God wanted to come and experience uh, this great gift uh, of salvation. So church of the living God, Satan, 
the Bible says uh, you must understand Satan is not uh, is not omnipresent uh, he cannot be anywhere uh, uh, everywhere at once uh, so that is why he has so much agents uh, at work church of the living God because uh, the Bible says he was uh, around and about church of the living God the world uh, and my God almighty uh, and God and him had some encounter and God said to him have you consider my servant Job as you consider my servant Reverend McDonald have you consider my servant Reverend Dunkley have you consider my servant Sister Haltia have you consider my servant young sister Britannia and the Lord and the devil will say you must understand you see these names that I just made mention of there is a God I feel like preaching tonight there is a God around them there is nothing that I can do because you protect them so much but guess what almighty God the moment you remove this God I guarantee that they are going to turn away from you. My question to you tonight, when the enemy comes at you, are you going to turn your back on Jesus? Or are you going to fight? Because the God that we serve is not only when we are up on the mountains, we are going to give him prayer, search, all when we down in the valley, all when we can't find food, all when things now go right all when problems in the house at the workplace in the community problems left right and center I am still gonna worship almighty God I know the relationship I have with my God can somebody give God worship in this place tonight so because we are protected church of the living God uh, there is uh, an edge uh, protection around us uh, I want the believers to understand tonight uh, as the Holy Spirit gives it to me uh, when you walk there is a mark uh, and there is a spiritual mark uh, there is something around you uh, sometimes it's not like the enemy could not destroy you uh, or certain things could have happened to you uh, but what is over your church of the living God. Um, God has been protecting you. So all the arrows that were thrown at your church of the living God all the times that you could have died. The accident the sickness. My God Satan wanted to take your life but because the angels of the Lord enchanted round and about you Satan of a back up so church of the living God, so Satan said, God, once you remove all that God, that, that God, that is it. And church of the living God, that God was removed. And Satan, my God, was allowed church of the living God to have his way in the life of Job. I don't know what you're going through tonight. But I hear the Lord said to tell somebody that I am with you I am with you you are going through your problems you are going through your situation you feel like giving up tonight those online I'm preaching to you as well you feel like throwing in the towel my God you can't bother with this Christian walk too much things happening I'm carrying too much burden but I want you to know tonight that the problem solver the burden bearer he is here tonight he said to take his yoke upon you and learn of him cause his yoke is easy and his burden is light tonight church of the living God whatever you are going through give it to God tonight whatever you are going through he is the answer for your problems tonight So church of the living God, 
things just start to change now for Job. My God, you can imagine things just going on. All fine and all right, church. And then Job just got a call. That guess what, church of the living God? I lost all ten children in one day, church of the living God. All ten children that Job brought up, that raised, he'll send them to school. Job did the best for them. Job said, the Bible said when Job, when they even keep party, Job go and Job repent on their behalf because Job said, I don't know if they sin against Almighty God. So Job loved his children, church of the living God. But when the enemy had his way, all ten children church were destroyed. Church of the living God, I know it is not easy to lost a child, much less children. I remember Church of the Living God in 2019 when I was uh, expecting my first child. My God, I was happy. I was thinking about the things that I would do for my daughter. My God Almighty, cause we would have heard the sex of the daughter, Church of the Living God, and dear, I was planning. My God, expect in my first child but one my God almighty one weekend like this everything changed for the worse when my wife went for her doctor's visit they said that she had a condition known as pre church of the living God and as a result of that they said guess what you are in danger the baby is in danger the baby was about six um, six um, um, we call it now six months uh, dear about church of the living God so the lungs uh, was not developed as the church of the living God uh, but they said that they had to do this operation uh, and at that time it was our one year anniversary church of the living God uh, the, 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 the Saturday was um, our anniversary no the Sunday was our anniversary and the Monday would have been my wife's birthday uh, and on the Monday they said guess what we are gonna take this baby and my God on the Monday they did the procedure church my God I prayed I prayed I talked with God I beg God because in those times I I come to understand who God is and I beg God for a miracle church of the living God but church to cut this story short the baby was taken on my wife's birthday church and I remember the Monday night I went to visit that baby in the incubator church and I say God may I beg you for me the baby I pull through church of the living God you see by Friday church we got a news church of the living God to come to the hospital when we reached their church I could just remember the lady um, they just going in slow motion the baby died at a particular time my God our whole world church of the living God came down on us my God church but because of the relationship that I have with almighty God and because I know this God I serve in my suffering church of the living God just like Job when he lost his children when he lost his wealth the Bible says Job cut his ear went down on his knees Naked I came into this world and naked I will depart. But blessed be the name of the Lord. Church of the living God, can somebody worship God with me tonight? In spite of what you are going through, can you give God some worship? My God, it is not easy tonight, but still worship the King of Kings. Still worship the Lord of Lords. Still worship the conquering lion of the tribe of Judah. Church, 
It is not easy when you are going through to find a worship. It is not easy when you are going through to find a praise. This is why when you come to crusade, you have to full up the tank. For when these times come around, you can always dip in at the reserve and still find a praise. You can say, despite of all that I'm going through, despite trouble on every side, God, you are a good God. Job lost everything. Everything church of the living God. And the Bible said Job, he, he did not sin. I, I guess he confused the enemy church of the living God. Because the enemy could not realize that in the midst of all this trouble, in the midst of this heartache and pain, how is it that this guy is still worshipping? My God Almighty, him say, you are right. Him things say, don't hear so. Just give me a chance, Almighty. God to do something worse to him and you are going to see if he's still church go into worship you and my God the Bible says that the enemy allows sores to him to come all over Job. When you read the scripture the Bible says that the boils they were painful church of the living God. Job fears um, some serious agony. Have you ever been in serious pain yet? I remember church when it was Chick V and church when Chick V lit me church of the living God and my God when me feel the pain. The sickness will make you walk and bend before the time and when Chick V lit me church of the living God and my God there was pain all over my body. Hey God I remember remember the night I said God if it, this is it then this is just it and for the whole night me woke up prayer come and say me now go on my bed and tomorrow I'll be in the house of the Lord because I need my deliverance and I remember the next morning I creep to open Bible church at one of those prayer meetings my first option wasn't the doctor and I'm not saying to follow me church of the living God you have to know um, your situation you have to know your level of faith and I remember coming to church the morning I was in so much pain and I go to the altar and I cry out to God and I ask the prayer warriors to pray for me church and little after that my God my pain went away church of the living God but it was not so for Job the Bible said Job after being a hashes sit down Good, good job, church of the living God. Job went back to school. I come, Job. I ensure say, the kids, them all in a whole lab of things. Have them book and them pencil to go back to school. Job now bad mind nobody pitney me, as we made mention. Job now got no hobby a man or practice no farmer of witchcraft. Job was a good man. What do we do, church of the living God, those present and those online? What, will, what do we do or how we deal with circumstances when we now reach to a point of serious suffering, church of the living God, where things are happening and you just have no control over it? You don't even understand what is going on or why this thing is happening to you why my God almighty I don't even question why God took my daughter at the time one thing I remember saying in those days God you are God and sometimes your ramp really rough but guess what nothing is gonna stop me from giving you worship So the child, I remember, I remember um, King David, uh, my God, when he committed adultery and God said uh, he was going to destroy that pregnancy. And the Bible said that David fast uh, for seven days for that child. Uh, but on the seventh day, the child died. Uh, and when David do, David get up and go back uh, um, as if things, uh, uh, back to things, uh, uh, if things were um, just normal uh, as they were before. So church of the in God, sometimes you have people, they might go through one hard time 
And them just always have the little pity party. You know them people, eh? We just always want you sorry for them. No man, rough up and tough up. You are a child of the most high God. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in this world. Greatness is in you. The Holy Spirit, do not miss, is in you. No, it is hard because when you go through, it's not easy. When I was going through that time, it's not easy. I'm person will lose loved one and I go through with them. I go through now. Family members sick, pit me, I get problem. I sat or something happen. It is not easy, church of the living God. But church, you see the thing known as prayer, fasting, reading your Bible and worship. I make it a lifestyle. So there is nothing that the enemy is going to come with to keep me down for long. Nothing, church. So the Bible says these, uh, these, these boils now uh, was peeing in Job church of the living God. Uh, the man sit down in a ashes church uh, and him have a little thing uh, a scratch himself. You can imagine my God, uh, all those boils, all those peeing all over your church of the living God. Uh, because the Bible says for seven days. Dear's church, his friends sat with him and did not say a word. So it simply means, I know one day Job feel the pain. I know two day Job feel the pain. It may be even more than seven days. More than seven days. Job was feeling the pain, but all we know, he was suffering, church, of the living God. It reached a point. My God, you have to know who you are married or who you are married. See all those who are look wife and husband banner know who you are going to marry because we have a generation where one cut out until the death do us part they will reach a place for sickness or for better for worse for sickness or health that now work again because you have people when sickness come them step out and gone leave you job wife i don't want to go into the psychology of job wife but what the bible says is that job when she saw job the only thing that she could have said was curse god and Die, my God Almighty, regardless of what you're going through, don't let nobody encourage you to give up on God. Curse God and die. The wife said, Church of the living God. Job's a foolish woman. Are you thinking so we all get good from God all the time and uh, get a little challenge every now and then, Church of the living God? That is just the reality of life. You will be living a fantasy Christian life. Everything that everything. Every day you get up, things are going to be okay. My God, you're going to worship God uh, as if you already make it to heaven. No, you have to wake up. If you read the Bible, and sometimes we don't go read the prosperity part, as uh, Reverend MacDonald was talking about. We don't read the part. If you understand Christianity is a is a is a is a is a is a faith system of suffering church. Our Savior suffered. The men of old, the forefathers, they suffered. So oh, we no one go through nothing. You are going to go through some suffering before you enter the pearly gate. So church of God. So with all that was happening, Job friends came to comfort him. And I now go to chapter 3 of the text. Because this is when now Job, and this is when now I'm going to get a little more personal. And this is when now Job started to speak. Because I guess the suffering was so much, church of the living God, that Job, him couldn't curse God. So Job now start to curse the very day that he was born. Job said, I wish this day church of the living God, it just never happened. I wish when my mother and my father came together, my God, no pregnancy took place. Because with all that I am going through now, it would have been better if I wasn't born. With all that I'm going through now, it would have been better if I 
died at birth. I believe now that Job was stressed out, church. Job was depressed. My God, Job reached to a state of hopelessness, church of the living God. And I am one preacher tonight can tell you about hopelessness. I have been down that road, church of the living God tonight. In 20, in 2009, church of the living God, I saw suffered a serious mental breakdown serious mental breakdown i was schizophrenic that are the pretty word feet but i was out of my mind church of the living god a night like this walking from here so I want to go back to Kingston and us, a simple thing that for me. I would be on the road walking up and down. It reached a point, church of the living God. I was so out of it, church, that I even stopped being a walk till me heel back crack. I turn against family members. My God Almighty, church of the living God, hours in the night. I would get up out of the house and I would be just walking up and down, just walking. There were some days, church, when my mother and my father, church of the living God, when they came to the room, to look for me and they realized that I was not there because their son who is going through this trouble, their son who is going through this trial and tribulation that all of them was facing at the time they would get into the car church and they would drive around, sometimes they drive around all night looking for this boy who was out of his mind their good son church who them send go college their good son church who them expect great things from the boy life came down to nothing After I said nothing, I mean nothing, church. I reach a point in life. We are church of the living God. I was on the road asking for $20 to buy weed. Mr. and Mrs. Weird, good son. Asking for $20 to buy weed, church of the living God. As I said, I'm going to get personal tonight as the Holy Spirit leads. It reached a point where people in my community were so afraid of me, church of the living God. That one at the time, them asked the people, them, we take up mad people off of the road. They come give me me injection and take me off of the road, church of the living God. So the family and I, we went through at that time church i remember there was a time when my mother she cried out and she said god what have i ever done did i ever do anything to anybody child then why is this happening to my son and church of the living god we are talking about problems tonight and my god my parents who are christians and still alive sometimes when they did not know where i was you know where they was they see the person who is the answer for every problem and my God almighty every fasting session they were dear every consecration se session my God they were dear and they asked the brothers and they asked a sister to pray for my son I don't know what is happening but pray for my son and church of the living God they pray Prayed. They prayed. And can I tell you something tonight? I am a testimony that Jesus Christ is the answer for any problem. Every problem. Jesus is the answer. God 
took me from down there. Sometimes persons see me, they don't understand uh, where God has taken me from. Uh, you don't understand what I've been through uh, to reach where I am now. Uh, that is why I don't care, but nobody uh, is going to mash up the relationship uh, I have with my father. Church, I believe in God. I can walk away from ministry, uh, but I will never walk away from my God. Uh, my God has been good to me. I know the relationship I have with my God. My God has been proven and tested. So take everything away from me. Once I have God, I am good church of the living God. Because everything that I have now, I attribute it all to Almighty God. And so church, it'll reach a period because I don't want to be here all night. As I said, I want to pray for some people. We're going to anoint and pray. It reach a period, church of the living God. We are now, I was, I started to recover a little after being to the doctors and so on. But church, I reach a point of depression, of suicide. And we bind that spirit from over all over right now in the name of Jesus. We bind that spirit from over our family members right now. We bind that spirit from over this nation right now. We bind that spirit. Somebody who may be contemplating suicide tonight. My God Almighty, we intercede now in the realm of the spirit. And we say, God, make haste to deliver that individual now in the name of Jesus that person almighty God who is at a state of hopelessness don't know what to do cannot see brighter days God show up for that person like how you showed up for me I was stressed out Depressed church of the living God. And when I depressed, my God, Satan come to me night and day. And Satan say, boy, where you not go kill yourself? All of your friends, and where you and them go to high school, where you and them go to college, you know, see everybody and make progress. Look by your life, your life not come down to nothing. Boy, just go kill yourself. And church of the living God, there were days, I must tell you, church, that I planned it out in my mind because I was so depressed I couldn't see days like these if you would have seen me those days and I said Orlando no worry yourself man God have great things in store for you I would say you are a liar church of the living God it reached a point church where I got the rope mighty God and was looking for that tree just to jump off and end my life but you see preaching crusade not take it lightly I was a sinner going to crusade and church. And sometimes the pastor's voice come back to me. I say, if you kill yourself, you can't see God. I was a sinner, but I wanted to see God. And then God had a plan for my life. It reached a point where I just was at the edge you now of just, just, just jumping off and, and just in my life, church of the living God, those days. And I encourage you to read Job chapter 3. Every time I read Job chapter 3, I see myself in this passage of scripture. There were days, my God, my days were dark. My days were gloomy gloomy or blurry or whatever our great church of the living God I could not see days like these my God all I was asking God for when I wake up in the mornings I said God then why you bother wake me up for this man we never just take my life last night I was separate I segregate myself from everybody friends I used to go out and party a lot from high school college I was well known I was famous and I just isolate myself take one myself and my God the devil deal with me deal with me deal with me but church of the living God in all I do is trouble somebody was praying for me and that is why tonight and see your friends Jesus is the answer for any problem and every problem I was hopeless. Couldn't see brighter days. 
Never knew that God had a plan for my life. I speak over the life of somebody and somebody related to you tonight. God is saying, I know the plans I have for you. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you. Plans to give you a future. Church of the living God, young people, come what may, you know, do good upon the exam. Don't kill yourself over that. Certain things don't go all your planet. Don't kill yourself over that. Because I was delayed for years, Church of the living God. But you see, in a 2020, my God, God stepped into my life and church of the living God God began to work on me, the moment I accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, my sinner friends, with all that you are going through, your life just can't go away tonight I want you to try Jesus I'm coming down now when I left from Clarendon and I came to Kingston Church of the Living God, I did not know what to do. I only had two options, or basically one option. My option was just to kill myself, and that is it. Because my parents were asking me, now, then what are you going to do with your life? You're a young man, and you know, parents always ask that when they see them son and them pitney stagnant. What are you going to do with your life? So, you all right, me have a, a family member in a Kingston who operate a scrap metal industry. Let me see if we can get a work from him now. Because Church of the Living God, I was a young man growing up with confidence. I had confidence in school. Man, because when I was a school man, I had a girls man. I a girls man. You know them the way they are. I had friends, well known, popular. And Church of the Living God. And so my life now, when I came to, to Kingston to work in the Scrap metal yard, church of the living God. I could not think of myself highly. I think of myself as a nobody. With everything that I'm going through, I am a nobody. I couldn't see myself better off than taking up all iron and a chore in a, in, in a container. I couldn't see myself better off than being in Riverton dumper. I know what it is like to eat rejected food. Because I couldn't see better for myself. The last thing when I was going through, I was living at Pembroke Hall at the time, Church of the Living God. The last thing the enemy said to me before all of this change was that I was at home one of the time, Church of God. And Satan said, boy, we're not just walk out in a one car and kill yourself. Let's say your life not come down to nothing. And Church, I used to walk from River Tana, um, come over on Spanish Town Road, go through Kalaloo Bed, take it on to Washington, come upon the boulevard. And my God, into Pembroke Hall, but uh, Church of the Living God, uh, each time I reach on the boulevard after coming through Washington uh, and I look at um, Kingston Open Bible and that cross uh, for some strange reason that cross uh, gave me some hope of carrying on uh, and I remember when the enemy said go walk out in a one car uh, and the voice, I know it was the voice of God said to me uh, go and talk to a past, to that past, that, that church Church. Um, Reverend Henry was the pastor at the time. Uh, and Church of the Living God, there is a Methodist church just right next door to me. For those of you who know Pembroke Hall and that Methodist church. Uh, and God never led me there. The morning church, uh, he led me down to Kingston Open Bible Church. Uh, I went there the Monday the pastor wasn't in. Uh, them say, come back the Tuesday morning church. Uh, and when I met with the pastor the Tuesday morning, and Reverend Alston Henry said to me do you want to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior with all the problems that you are going through your future is still bright when he was talking church of the living God I was wondering what was this man talking about but he said I give you Jesus and for a moment I wanted to say boy I'm not going to bother with this Christian life but the Holy Spirit said, give me a try. And Church of the Living God, from 2020, 10 church, when I accept Jesus,
Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. The Bible says that any man be in Christ is a new creature. All things are passed away and behold all things have become new. And church, I said I'm coming down. Oh my God, I start to go prayer meeting at Kingston Open Bible Church. And at the prayer meeting, man, and God start to do a thing. And God now minister to me and say, apply for Bible school. Left river and dump. I call out of this place. This is not your future. Some of you where you are now, it is not where God wants you to be. I call up some of you now from out of some situation. Because God, God have greater plans in store for you tonight. And my God, things start to happen. I go to Bible school, church of the living God. And when I leave Bible school, I left Bible school good oh my god my grades were up there i was under the, the, the my picture was under all of fame i mean say yes god you are do a thing and then god said guess what a time for the wife no satan did want to destroy you but i had a plan for your life and then god just give me a wife church of the living god and even though him take a baby him give me two lovely ones church i believe in god i had a thing say god would have done with me since Lately, I'm almost in my wife. I run it. We now operate a pharmacy church of the living God. And look at me now at Olaba preaching the gospel. The youth pastor at Kingston Open Bible Church. No one can tell me that God, that Jesus is not the answer for every problem. No can tell me nothing tonight. Jesus Christ is the answer for everything you are going through tonight church of the living God to cut Job story short church of the living God when you read the last chapter of Job with everything that Job went through God still restored Job I speak restoration over some of you tonight in the name of Jesus you have been through some stuff and you think that where you are it is it a prophesy tonight this that is not where God wants you to be God is going to lift you up so Job was restored church of the living God just like how Job restored me each time I go back to Clarendon there is this church brother he said to me the only thing left for you to do was to eat out of the garbage bin. That's the only, every sign that mad people, I'm going to use the word mad tonight, because God tell me if you speak it at all, as how it is tonight. Every sign that they displayed, schizophrenic, where you want to call it, I displayed those symptoms. But God, but God, every time I go back to Clarendon, there is a party. Because when they see this boy and what the Lord is doing in his life, people worship God and say, yes, there is a God. So I can testify to my unsaved friends tonight that there is a God. And he is the answer to every problem, for every problem. He may the hands of it. Obi a man can't help you. The Prime Minister can't help you. Visa can't help you. All of the changes in the system can't help you. But I know a man who can. His name is Jesus. And he still specializes in things that are impossible tonight. So, Deacon, I am ready for the... Brother Hines, I am ready for the olive oil tonight. It's a praise and worship team here. We're going to sing this song, Reach Out and Touch the Lord. As he passes by, you will find he's not too busy to hear your heart's cry. He's passing by this morning. I want to do it quick because I want to pray for the unsaved. So we don't want to stay all night. I'm just going to um, I'm just lay hands on you. Just 
pull it for me please as we anoint this now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth and just come in faith whatever problem you are going through I am pointing you to Jesus I'm pointing you to him because he's the one that did it for me no man could have done what um, God has done for me so I'm pointing you to Jesus Christ tonight praise and worship team take it away And touch the Lord. Come on, believers, let us go fast, fast. As he passes by, you will find it's not too busy to hear your Come on, church, let us make a line fast, fast. We don't have all night. I want to anoint everybody tonight. Rev, can you come and help me to anoint some people tonight so we can do it faster? Only one bottle of olive oil we have. Alright, we're gonna work with the one bottle of olive oil. Just throw some in my hand, please. So you're just gonna come in faith. As you are anointed, just go. It's not to be seen. Hallelujah. Jesus. Eba koshata kata. Eba koshira bakata. Come on. Reach out and touch the Lord. Has He? Come on, praise and worship team. Sing it. Uh, reach out and touch a bako shata ba 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 kasata. Exercise your faith tonight. Exercise your faith tonight. Exercise your faith tonight. It's not by might, it is not by power, but it is by the spirit of Almighty God tonight. Raba ba 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 kasata. Whatever it is, I don't know the problem you are facing tonight, but I know the God who is the answer to any problem you are facing tonight. No matter what the name of the problem is, just come in faith tonight and watch God work. I could have been dead, buried, and forgotten, but God answered those prayers that my family members pray. When others gave up on me, they never stopped believing in me. And God answered their prayer. God is going to answer your prayer tonight. Just lift your faith tonight and believe God for whatever it is you are believing God for. He specializes in things that are impossible tonight. God is in this place tonight. Easier to perform miracles, signs, and wonders tonight. Hey, Jesus. Hey, mighty God. I prophesy tonight that in the next week, some of you is going to witness a move of God. Some of you, it will be in the months coming. Some of you, next year, this time, my God, you're going to be amazed by what God is going to do in your life. I can testify tonight because he has done it for me. Those online tonight, we pray for you at home as well. We anoint you in the spirit tonight. In your house, we anoint you. The anointing is strong. Even some houses now, God is driving out demons and devils. Spirits have been plaguing you in your house. I tell you tonight that after tonight, you're going to sleep like a baby. Every spirit that is not of God will have to go. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Those who don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, I invite you to the altar tonight. My unsaved friends, I invite you to the altar tonight. 
I want to do a special prayer for you tonight. Those sitting on the wall, I invite you tonight. Come. Let this preacher man pray for you tonight. Come on, just make a walk tonight. I was like you one time. But my mother said this to me. That prayer is never too much. Every crusade at church as a youngster. I never wanted to go to the altar. But my mother said prayer is never too much. Come this way my sinner friends. Prayer is never too much. And with all that is going on. You need the protection of Almighty God. Is there any more unsaved around tonight? Even if you are in your house. We invite you over tonight. Just come up some more. You can come up some more. You can come up some more. Just make a line right here. Church, I want you to pray for these at the altar. Because the enemy is out trying to destroy people. Telling people that the Christian life is not the best life. But let us pray for somebody tonight. Because if one person give their life to the Lord, heaven will be rejoicing. Sing it, prayer team. Don't stop singing. my testimony and I'm not going to keep you at the altar too long there's a mark upon you you're a special young lady not going to keep you at the altar too long you have heard my testimony and what God has done for me this God that I'm telling you about will do even greater things in your life I can do greater things in your life I say to you tonight, I remember when Pastor Henry had me in his office and when he told me the story of a chicken, of an eagle that was in or amongst chicken. Long and short of the story is, he said to me that one day the farmer or a farmer came and said to the farmer who was taking care of the chickens, don't you realize that this Bird is not a chicken, but an eagle. Eagles can't remain with chickens. Eagle have to soar. They have to soar. And I remember when he got up out of his seat. And he said to me, be that eagle. And he asked me if I want to accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. The first thing the enemy said to me, my sister, and God is ministering to you. No man, nobody out with this Christian thing. But then a voice said to me, just give God a try. And I said, all right, Lord, I accept you. Let me in the sinner's prayer. I accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And can I tell you, from 2010 till today, God has done wonders in my life. And I say to you tonight, God can answer and solve any problem you are going through with a boyfriend problem, school problem, problem next door neighbor problem. You know, care which problem them carry a girl over a man till them weak, them tell lies for you. You know, matter what type of problem, God can solve it. And God had solved my problem. Some time ago, somebody looked at me and said, from a, from a, what did they say? From a mental ill man or from a madman to a preacher. This is how God works. He's special. When you read the Bible, the Bible is about miracles. Yeah. Miracles. 
and I have experienced the miracles of Almighty God in my personal life. I leave you with this. As I said before, I never thought in those days when I felt like killing myself that I would be standing, persons watching online and ministering to people. I never saw all of this. But God, this was right down long before the creation of the earth. So God have a plan for you. So where you are now is not where God wants you to be. He wants to take you higher. He wants you to be an eagle. He wants you to soar. So I say, I'm going to ask you to repeat this prayer after me. Father, forgive me of my sins. Come into my heart. Jesus, I, ac I acknowledge that you are the Son of God, born of the Virgin Mary, died on the cross for my sins. Jesus, write my name in the Lamb's book of life so that when you return, dear, I will be also. I said a prayer just like that. And God turned my life around. If you say that prayer tonight and you mean it, watch God work in your life. If you say that prayer and you mean it, I believe that there are persons that you can talk to. They will take your name. They will keep in touch with you. Thank you, my sister. You are looking so wonderful, so wonderful. All of you, so wonderful. God, which has blessings. God, which has blessings. God, which has blessings. I now turn over to Reverend McDonald. God bless you all. God bless Hallelujah. you all. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Yes, put your hands together for the Lord and what he is doing here tonight in all these lives. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We give him all the glory and all the honor. God's plan must be fulfilled. So brothers and sisters, we give the Lord thanks for his servant who has spoken tonight as ministered as the Lord led him. And all those who came up and got that touch with that olive oil. I want to just say something to you that there's no hocus pocus in the oil, you know. It's your faith in God to do whatever it is that you are having an issue that you believe in God when that oil touched me. I want to say something here, you know. I noticed, you know, all of them out there on the wall walking and getting in touch. Because they believe God will do something. And I want to say to those of you who are now with the counselors and those of you who did not walk to the altar, that the same faith that you had to say, Lord, do something for me when that olive oil touched your forehead. Display that same faith in God to save your soul. Same faith. Same God. Brothers and sisters, the night is far spent. And we really want to just give God the glory and the honor for the miracle that is working in some lives right now. We might not see it right now, but God said it's going to happen. It must happen. So we praise him and we thank him. And we're inviting you to return on Sunday night. Oh boy, I almost don't want to say the final night. But we, we, we ask you to come back, man. Sunday morning we have regular service. You heard the, the, the notices from our elder Finnegan. We have interactive Sunday school. Oh, then we have our regular service. But we'll be back Sunday evening to climax. Nothing regular about the service, sir. Hallelujah. Nothing regular about it. And so we're inviting you all to return. I know some of you are here from your church. We're not saying to scull your church and come to my church. No, we're not saying that. But if you want to do it, you know, don't want to do it. <laughs> oh, bless the Lord. I have the reverend here enough to be careful. <laughs> sir, I am not inveigling your members, all right? <laughs> May I just invite you all to stand at this time?
Father, we thank you for your manservant, whom you have used tonight, all over the past two nights, Lord, to minister to your people. Lord, we who are listening do not understand some of what had happened last night and what has happened tonight and what will happen in the lives of those who have heard your word, Lord God, and who have been ministered to. But we want to thank you. We want to thank you, Lord, for what you're accomplishing in these lives. Lord, for the lives who have been set free, we thank you. Lord, for those who have accepted salvation, we thank you because they are no more entangled in the bondage of sin. Lord, there are no new creations in you. We want to thank you. Lord, we want to thank you for the victories that have been won and the victories that will continue to be won because of you, Jesus. Lord, please pour out a fresh anointing upon your manservant, Orlando Wait, God Almighty, continue to keep your hand upon him. Continue, Lord, to keep that edge around him. Lord, continue to give him your grace. Lord, because your grace is indeed sufficient for him. Lord, Continue to use him to minister your word. The way that only through him you can do that type of ministry. Bless your people here tonight, Lord, as we depart one from another. Lord, we'll be returning to our homes all over the country. Go with us. Lord, let your holy angels encamp round about us. We know a spirit, oh God, that no like what go on tonight. But we know much about them, Lord. We know that greater is he that is in us and with us than he that is in the world. So just protect your people. Cover them. And Lord, I just pray that all those who have come tonight and who are hearing our voices who are not saved, that Lord, they will find somewhere to attend the church. Either on a Saturday or a Sunday. But Lord, to a church that the word of God will be preached. That the God Almighty, they will hear you speaking to their hearts continually. Father, we ask that you just keep us under your blood. And you be glorified in us and through us. In Jesus' name, amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord makes his face to shine upon you and to be gracious unto you. The Lord turn his face towards you and bless you in your going out and in your coming in both now and forever. In Jesus name. Amen. 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 You see my little helves? Them know what to do, you know. Just take a chair, my brothers and sisters, and just take them inside. Follow the children. They know the way. Hallelujah. Brother Wait, bless you, sir.